That's I didn't, an veto, I didn't veto anything. Acting on behalf of the owners, as the owner's rep, uh, New Orleans decided not to make the trade. Thought the trade was happening. It didn't. Like I said, me and Kobe got on the phone, and Kobe is, is just special. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's just the nature of the beast. Right? It's just uh, in the business that we're in, the owners can make trades. And, uh, and in this situation, the commissioner has the right to, to, to avoid the trade. So for the players involved, I mean, it's always tough. Oh, nice knock away by Griffin. A three on one. Oh, hold on! Hold on! Here comes Griffin! Obviously, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to have him, but not only him, but Chauncey, Karan, DJ, you know, and the guys that we have, I think we all have, we have a great cast, and, um, you know, it's going to make each of us better. It's 2011, and the Los Angeles Lakers are hot off back-to-back -back NBA championships. The prospect of adding Chris Paul to a roster already featuring Kobe Bryant had fans buzzing about a potential dynasty. The New Orleans Hornets, who Paul was playing for, had actually agreed to a three-team trade involving the Lakers and Houston Rockets that would send CP3 to the Lakers. It was practically a done deal until then Commissioner David Stern stepped in with a decision that shocked everyone. He vetoed the trade. Stern's rationale was rooted in preserving competitive balance. At the time, the NBA owned the New Orleans Hornets and was concerned that the Lakers would become too powerful. Pairing Chris Paul with Kobe Bryant and freeing up cap space for a potential Dwight Howard acquisition would have likely made the Lakers a super team. That's I, didn't veto, I didn't veto anything. Acting on behalf of the owners, as the owner's rep, uh, New Orleans decided not to make the trade. Well, whose decision was it to, to stop the trade? No, uh, no, not to stop. No, no, not to stop. There's no superstar that gets traded in this league unless the owner says, go ahead with it. And in the case of New Orleans, the representative of the owner said, that's not a trade we're going to make. But that representative was you, if I'm not. Correct. Why, so, in effect then, you said the trade is not going to go through. I said that New Orleans would not make the trade uh, that had been proposed to them. And was that the right move to make? You know, you buy a ticket and see. We'll see how it works out. The veto left Chris Paul stunned, and he wasn't alone. In his own words, Paul recalled the moment he heard the news saying, I was on the phone with my brother and my agent. We were hot about it. Me and Kobe had talked already. It was a lot. The GM called and me and Kobe got on the phone. We talked. We talked and uh, a phone call came through to let us know that the, the trade was next. Thought the trade was happening. It didn't. Like I said, me and Kobe got on the phone and Kobe is... Is just special. And so the Lakers' loss became the Clippers' gain. The Clippers swooped in and acquired CP3, and with that, a new era for the franchise was born. For the Clippers, acquiring Chris Paul was nothing short of transformative. The team had long been one of the least successful in the league, but the acquisition of Paul brought a spark of hope and excitement, especially with the combination of young stars Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan. It was Griffin who coined the term Lob City when he found out about the Chris Paul trade, saying it's gonna be Lob City, man. This nickname captured the excitement that Paul Griffin and Jordan brought to the franchise. Their jaw-dropping alley-oop dunks became the Clippers' calling card and energized a fan base that had long been starving for success. With Paul as the floor general, the Clippers made the playoffs for six straight seasons, a feat they hadn't come close to achieving in their franchise history. Their brand of basketball was exhilarating, every game felt like a highlight reel. Chris Paul's playmaking abilities, combined with Griffin and Jordan's athleticism, made the team a must-watch. 
but with great success comes even greater expectations. The Clippers finally had a roster talented enough to contend for a championship, but every playoff run seemed to be met with misfortune. Injuries plagued the team repeatedly. Chris Paul later reflected on this, admitting that despite their talent, they never had much luck in the playoffs. He said, and I quote, In order to win a championship, you have to be lucky. We were never lucky. Looking back, it's easy to see how injuries and bad timing robbed the Lob City Clippers of their best chances. The 2015 season was the closest they came to breaking through when they held a 3-1 lead over the Houston Rockets in the second round. But the Clippers collapsed, losing the series in seven games, a devastating end to a season that held so much promise. The pressure of high expectations wasn't the only challenge the team faced. Tyron Liu, who was an assistant coach with the Clippers during the Lob City era, pointed out that one of the largest reasons the team couldn't get over the hump was the lack of chemistry between Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. The two stars struggled to maintain a positive relationship on and off the court. Unlike Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, who managed to overcome their differences and win three straight NBA championships, Paul and Griffin couldn't make it work. Their strained relationship often led to visible frustration on the court and inside the locker room, and even though they respected each other's talents, that disconnect ultimately hindered the team's ability to win when it mattered most. Tyron Lue's perspective sheds light on the importance of chemistry, especially at the highest levels of competition. Without that cohesion, talent wasn't enough. Adding to their challenges, the Clippers had to navigate one of the NBA's biggest controversies, the Donald Sterling scandal. In 2014, audio recordings of Clippers owner Donald Sterling making racist remarks were released, causing a media firestorm and placing the team under intense scrutiny. Sterling was subsequently banned from the NBA for life and the team was sold to Steve Ballmer. Although Chris Paul stated that the scandal didn't directly impact their on-court performance, it was yet another distraction in an already complicated journey. By the 2016-2017 season, it became clear that Lob City's championship window had well and truly closed. Chris Paul was traded to the Houston Rockets in 2017, marking the end of an era. Griffin would soon be traded to the Detroit Pistons, and DeAndre Jordan also moved on. The Lob City era didn't bring a championship, but it was undeniably the best stretch in Clippers history up to that point. The team consistently competed in the playoffs, had more wins than losses, and changed its image in the league, going from a laughing stock to a respected contender. The Clippers of today, featuring Kawhi Leonard and James Harden, were built on the foundation that Lob City established. Although injuries and load management issues have plagued this current era and continue to do so, it's clear that the Clippers are now expected to be in the playoff mix every single season, and that's an expectation that started with Chris Paul's arrival. In the end, the story of the vetoed Chris Paul trade is more than just one decision. It's about the unpredictable nature of sports, the mix of talent, chemistry, and luck that makes champions, and the legacies that can emerge even from unfulfilled potential. Chris Paul may have not won a championship with the Clippers, but he left an undeniable mark on the franchise and the league as a whole. As we look back, it's fascinating to consider how one veto trade reshaped the paths of not just one, but multiple franchises. And while Lob City may have not achieved everything it set out to, its impact on the Clippers, their fans, and the NBA cannot be understated. Well, there you have it. The story of how the only veto trade in NBA history kept the Clippers relevant in what was otherwise going to be the toughest period in their franchise's history. Thanks for watching everyone and let me know what you think. Was David Stern's decision the right one? And how would the NBA look today if the trade had gone through? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more upcoming videos and NBA content. My name is Damien Peters. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.